If there's anything the Genshin community's done right recently, it's placing Faith back in Albedo. He went from being shunned on his banner's release to being simped over day in, day out online. So I'm really proud of him, but hey, if you want to roll for Eula instead, that's fine. That's on you. But you know, you'll be missing out on some prime husbando material. This guy's an alchemist, an artist, and a knight. He's talented, elegant, handsome, good with kids, and he's very capable with his sword <clears throat> but alas not everyone that wants him will actually be able to get him so for those unfortunate souls i've prepared a little gift did you know that genshin impact has another handsome medium build sword user with the geo element his name is ether the traveler and today i derpfish shall prove to you all that our little budget albedo here is actually a slumbering giant with impressive potential for someone that you get for free we're gonna build him to hit nicely today so buckle up it's time to grind step one to making ether stronger is of course making the man himself nice and buff fortunately traveler is the only character in the game whose ascension materials are obtained without spending resin you can get these little gem things from increasing your adventure rank and i'm well this, so I'll definitely have more than enough. Still, Mora and XP materials are a pain to grind for, so I'll just be leaving Ether at a comfortable 80 out of 80. That's enough to ascend our talents all the way to level 8 each. Speaking of which, let's take a look at talents. Spoiler alert, they suck. If Traveler's Ascension materials are the most convenient thing ever to obtain, his talent materials are the exact opposite. For whatever dumb, stinking reason, Mehoyo designed it so that Traveler's required talent books change every time you level up, which means having to grind for every type of talent book rather than just one. Thanks to wikis and guides, this gimmick only really becomes a slight inconvenience, but could you imagine if we didn't have any external references? You'd have to guess which books to prioritize next or just grind for every single one, which is just so dumb. Also, did you know that Geo Traveler is the only Traveler variant in the game who uses both Mondstadt and Leo books? The Animo Traveler requires all three kinds of Mondstadt books. The Electro Traveler requires all three kinds of Inazuma books, but guess what? Geo Traveler requires all three Mondstadt books and all three Leah books because why not? So out of spite, I have decided to level up his skill and burst only. One, because those are the talents that only require Leah books to ascend, but two, they're also the most important parts of Traveler's kit. His elemental skill summons Big Rock. With Ascension Passive 1, its cooldown is permanently lowered to 6 seconds, making it a perfectly viable quick swap option and our main source of damage for DPS Ether. Big Rock hits hard, but unfortunately it has a very clunky hitbox. If placed the wrong way, enemies will climb it. If you tap the skill instead of hold it, it's likely going to miss. But above all, the most infuriating part about this thing is the fact that it breaks other geo structures. Planting Ningguang's jade screen next to this thing will automatically shatter the screen, and unfortunately, Big Rock is, well, big. And multiple rocks can hog the field for long periods of time, making it really frustrating at times. Thankfully, I won't be running into this issue later, but it's still something to keep in mind in case you're running a geo team. Now, on the other hand, his elemental burst launches an earthquake outwards in a pretty modest radius, hits multiple enemies for nice damage, and unlocks a cute little buffing ability when Aether is Constellation 1. Speaking of which, let's talk about constellations. Traveler's constellations are usually easy to obtain, and Geo Traveler is no exception. You get two constellations from beating the Archon quest, and the rest of them can be bought here at Mingxing Jewelry using Geo Sigils. They're kind of expensive for low level players, but I'd enough to afford them at like. AR-35, so no excuses. If you build Traveler, get the constellations, they're super useful. Constellation 1 is arguably the most important since, as mentioned, it turns my elemental burst into a buffing circle. All active characters inside this ring will get a 10% crit rate buff, and I'm pretty sure this works in co-op too. Up until this point, Geo Ether was just an Ooga Booga rock man to hit stuff with, but this constellation actually adds enough to his kit to make him more flexible in a lot of quick swap teams. I don't really need to talk about his other constellations, they're just really useful and actually pretty good, especially C3 and C5, since once you have them, you don't have to invest as much into Traveler's talents anymore. Anymore. There's also C6, which allows you to keep 100% uptime on your burst, but that's pretty much it. All right, preparation is almost over, so now all we need is his weapon and artifacts. Unfortunately, I don't own a Mist Splitter or Jade Cutter, so I guess for now we're sticking with the Dull Blade. Harbinger of Dawn or Black Cliff Longsword. Either works, and I'll be showcasing both weapons later. As for artifacts, I actually tried building Aether once before. His artifacts are currently scattered across characters, so I'll just, uh... 
take. Yoink. Yes. Snatch. Thank you very much. And voila. Two-piece archaic Petra, two-piece noblesse, and of course, perfect crit ratio. Uh, ignore the 1.4k attack. Anyways, uh, let's see some early numbers. These hillichurls shall serve as my first victims. 13k without buffs? Could be better. As for my burst, 7k per hit. Not bad, but should definitely be higher. Now I'm gonna add Bennett to the team, and we're gonna go to the classic Cryo Regavene. There's no reason for me to be doing this boss specifically, it's just personal preference. Everybody stand back. 23k skill and 13k burst. Almost 14k, actually. Just to double check, I went to Masanori and got the exact same damage. Pretty tasty, but this still feels a little underwhelming, so... How about we step things up? Here we go. Solo Aether versus Child. This can only end well. <laughs> I've got my NRE stocked up with Sweet Madams, so here's the strat. We are not gonna use the Harbinger of Dawn, because the crit rate buff of that weapon only works when you're near max HP, and I'm probably gonna get smacked around a lot, so Blackcliff Longsword it is! Oh, and I also commentated this part live, so uh... Enjoy past me for a bit, I guess. This opportunity is quite hard to- Yeah, yeah, whatever, man. I know, I know, I know it is, whatever. I completely missed. Uh, da. Another one, let's go. I'm critting. I have 50% crit rate, by the way. So this is quite cool. Ow. Ah. This is the reason why I stopped using the Harbingi of Dawn. Is because the crit rate- Oh my goodness, how do I dodge that? Ah! Ah! Oh my god. Okay, well, we're alive, I guess. Um, more madams. More healing. Um, bah. It's actually really hard to hit this guy. I'm so annoyed by how jank Shalvar's attacks are. Because they don't... Was that 19k? What did I do? Why did I do 19? <laughs> oh my god! I'm so not a fan of every time he does that attack. Please die now. No! There we go, next phase. Okay, burst, skill, nice, okay. We're gonna keep him trapped inside the burst. No, he's just gonna break everything, apparently. How do I dodge this? Ah, what? I don't, I don't keep child alive long enough to know how to dodge that attack. Call that a flex if you this want, but... Is quite hard oh to my god. Away. Okay. Well, okay, me. child. So whatever. Opportunity. Option. Come. I hard. Uh... <clears throat> yes! Crit more, please. Honestly, I'm kind of contemplating just eating a crit food, but I don't know if that's really gonna help me out. I think I just need to change Traveler's build and Terror come back. Smash. And I also need to get good. Okay, hold on. After failing that first round horribly, I decided to switch up Traveler's gear. We're going with two-piece Gladiator instead of Noblesse this time, since Noblesse is only useful for quick swap ether. I'm using DPS ether and spamming his skill a bunch, so the extra attack bonus is really gonna come in handy. Here are the stats, and now back to my suffering. Um, there we go, 17. Okay, we're doing 17K now. Is this the run? Please tell me this is the run. That was 20k! I don't even know how that happened. Does my burst increase my my ease damage? I'm just really s spooked right now, really. I mean... Um... Ha, wha, ha. That completely missed. I'm doing bad. Um... Okay. Um... I keep dashing at random, not realizing that I'm running out of stamina. Okay. I just suck at this fight, I realize. What?! I didn't even know that he did that! Oh, please! Trevor! Oh my god! I don't have enough stamina for this fight, so... Here. We're gonna... I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm gonna eat food... To do this fight. Um... I have one prize catch. Um... How, am I, how far am I willing to go to win this fight, do you think? Sprinting stamina, right? We're doing sprinting stamina. Um... We're gonna heal over time. An Adeptus Temptation. Come on. Did that not reach him? Are you serious? What is he doing? Get back here, sir. BAM! I'm not critting. I'm actually going to have an aneurysm if this keeps up. Eh. Come on! 
Ether, you did this in the story quest. Why can't you do this, like, in-game? Technically, you should be able to do this with a dull blade too. Is that what I need to do? Dull blade ether? Is that gonna change things? Am I gonna suddenly b become a god? The second I equip a dull blade- Wait, I need to- Oh! If I stand close to him, he does a different attack. I should do that. Come here. Yes, yes, come here. I should have been doing this from the start. Because now your attack patterns are different and easier for me to handle. I take that back. Yes! Oh, K! First time entering the last phase. Um, I don't know how long my food's gonna last, but this is good. Um, the second I see my food statuses disappear, I'm gonna eat food, but hello, child. Get slapped. First thing. 22k first thing. Not bad. Okay, 21. Still not bad, but I kind of wish it were more. There we go. I'm gonna run out of my burst zone because I need more space to run around uh, I'm lucky that I dodged that I didn't expect to oh, I thought I dodged that okay I'm alive for some reason I am not dying as harshly as I assumed I how will get out no the wallets the whales cracking open the wallets oh my god I'm actually gonna beat him please Please! Oh, just keep doing that attack, please. It's so easy to dodge. Oh, if I could only crit, please. Come on, crit! Why is he not dead? Get him! Yes! Oh my god, I did it, actually, but with a lot of food. Um, I'd like to imagine that this is actually what happened during the story quest. Just Paimon shoving food into Traveler's Mouth as he fought Child. Okay. But to be fair, if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. Paimon's with us on our travels all the time. Loves food, supposedly helps us out in combat. I wonder how? She shovels food into our mouths, that's how. But anyway, whatever. We beat Child, that's good. After I barely managed to defeat Child, I realized just how puny my ether actually was. So I took the time to level up the rest of his stuff, starting with his normal attack. Coincidentally, the Fellflower event boss just opened up, and defeating it would help give me some of the talent books I need to level up. You know what that means. Co-op. I'm not gonna do solo ether again, because that's just too hard, so I'm doing the next best thing. I'm still technically using ether as a DPS, but at least this way I have teammates to carry me in case I die. And they... sorta did. After a few runs, I cleared all the talent books out of the event shop, which gave me a very lovely normal attack level 8. <laughs> That's more I'm never getting back. But now with my talents all leveled up nicely, the last thing I need is Aether's final ascension level. That's easy enough. Just obliterate the Windwheel Aster population, craft a couple masks, and... Woo! Oh, right. This is the first time I've ascended a character past level 80, so congrats to Aether, I guess. With our newfound strength, Aether is now capable of hitting 20k with his elemental skill. Combine that with chip damage from his burst and normal attack, and you've got a slightly usable DPS traveler. Let's go see what Tavat's general population has to say about this. Sucro says, What the f are you feeding traveler? Lumine says, <laughs> That apparently my Bennett is amazing. And not Aether. No comment on Aether at all. <laughs> Don't worry though, Aether says, Your Aether is amazing by the way. <laughs> Thanks, Ether. No problem, Ether. Then, uh, we have me out damaging a Ningguang, this person who said, seems like you do a lot, and then my personal favorite encounter. Teamwork is dreamwork! <laughs> that last one made me feel really proud. Anyways, I want to test out one last thing. How hard can Aether actually hit? We're gonna try to push him to his absolute limit here and bring him to Spiral Abyss Floor 7. Floor 7 grants an additional 120% crit damage to all characters. Add in Bennett with his Skyward Blade and Noblesse set and you get an additional 1000 or so attack. Then throw in Ningguang for the Geo Resonance, Jade Screen, Crystallize, and Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers buff. And finally, an additional Pyro character for the Pyro Resonance. Lastly, we're gonna organize Aether's artifacts. Since all we're after here is hitting a big number, I'm just gonna prioritize crit damage as much as possible and keep retrying until I get a crit. 
This was the best setup that I could come up with. Again, it's two-piece Petra, two-piece Glad, and the Blackcliff Longsword for better base attack. It's not incredible, but it'll do. And now, the moment of truth. Quick! Terra Smash! 85k! That's honestly not super crazy, but it's still a massive number, so let's go! Hope you're satisfied with that one. I think that's a job well done. Ether won't be replacing Albedo anytime soon, but it's still pretty cool that he can hold his own. Remember, if you need an extra sub DPS, Traveler will always be there to help, and you get the added bonus of plot armor because, well, protagonist. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want more quality Genshin Mobile content. But with that said, cheers. I'll see you around.